Now, the, the thing to do with intermingling is something that people uh, misunderstand often because Islam does not say that Muslim women cannot interact with men that are not their husbands or their brothers, um, their fathers, their sons. No. And right from the time of the Prophet, we had Muslim women interacting with him. They would come and ask their questions. He even had special sessions. Because the women came to him and complained, oh, it's only the men you are teaching. And then he asked them to pick a time and a day when he would have a special session with them. He taught them they, and he interacted with them. They, they went with them on uh, the battlefield while the men were fighting. The women would bring them food, bring them water, take care of the wounded. We had the woman nurse, Rufaida, who was taking care of the wounded. So women interacted with men. There was the hadith of a companion of the prophet who had gotten married and the prophet led some companions to visit the new couple. And the wife of the, the new bride served them, including the men, she served them all. So Islam um, being against intermingling does not say that men and women have to be completely segregated and have no dealing. We interact in the market. I can go to a shop and the person selling is a, is, is a male. There's nothing stopping me from buying from them. What Islam requires is decorum, that I conduct myself in a proper manner. And there are very, various verses. These Allah says, do not um, beautify your voice in such a way as to seduce those in whose heart there is a disease. So you talk in your normal tone. You only deal with things that whatever is the business of the transaction is what you deal with as much as possible. You avoid immoral or immodest things. And these are rulings that apply to Muslim women, not just in the workspace, but in any space they find themselves where they have to deal with a male that is not their mahram.